Hello, I'm uh, Daniel Metheringham. I've, um, I'm the VP of Agriculture and Sustainability, responsible for agronomy through to seed and contracting, uh, delivering to nine McCain facilities across North America. I've been in the potato industry for just over 26 years now. Um, I had 14 years in the fresh industry and 12 to 13 years in the processing industry um, over in the UK and now in North America. Um, I've had the privilege to travel uh, globally to regions such as South America, in Argentina, South Africa, and obviously all over Europe, looking at different uh, potato operations over there. So it's been a great privilege at the time at McCain uh, to be able to visit all of those regions, uh, you know, in, in the last sort of five or 10 years. I'm now based out of Chicago. You might be able to tell by my accent. Um, and I have three loves in my life. And that is my family that you can see up there. So you've got uh, Seb, Safina um, and, and my wife, Shaney. Um, I also love football. That's the, uh, the round ball. And my team are Lincoln City. Uh, their local team from where, where I am from. I don't have a premiership team. It is uh, league, league One for my sins. And then finally, um, I'm also a bridge geek. So wherever I go in the world, I do love a good bridge um, and try and uh, capture a, a picture with one. And uh, you'll see up on the screen, there's a, a bridge in Florenceville, New Brunswick, the home of McCain. Um, and it's just outside there is the longest covered bridge in the world. So uh, that was a definite delight for me. So what is the uh, question we're trying to answer today uh, over the next 10 minutes? And that's basically to an outlook of the US processing market. And the first thing what I want to do is just really consider what is in scope of that. When I grew up on that little island off the west coast of Europe, the UK, um, and I started in the industry, I actually started in a fresh pack uh, shed. And it was influenced by a radius of around about 50 miles. Um, and within the 14 years of that business, um, we went from a 50 mile radius to probably being influenced by the whole county, then the surrounding counties that surrounded Lincolnshire. And then over the next sort of five or 10 years, it became a UK market, then a European market. And certainly when I left the fresh trade, you know, there was influences from Russia and even North Africa that was having huge impact on the that market conditions of the fresh pack shed in the middle of uh, little old Lincolnshire. In the US, particularly in North America, I see that same dynamic. A, I've had it described to me previously as a sea of potatoes um, and demand that is not really influenced by any one state or even country, um, but has to be looked at holistically and through never ending layers of different scenarios that can all change within a moment. In short, this is my, my way of saying is no one really knows what's going to happen. But today I have the honour and I mean it is an honour to stand in front of you all today to talk and try and uh, give a bit of direction uh, and answer that that question. So where are we? I'm sure you'll all recognise these macro challenges. And again, these are issues that are facing the entire globe. Depending on where you are in the world, you just dial up or down each challenge. But wherever you are in the supply, supply chain, these challenges are very similar. Labor challenges, we really are seeing this across our, our factory facilities, but I see it on farm and everywhere. We have an unemployment at a really low rate of 3.7% uh, in the US. How do we achieve the required labor levels for seasonal work? How do we secure uh, a constant, reliable workforce? The, the challenge is retaining labor, skilled labor, work-life balance, and ensuring our teams are working in a safe environment, and how to engage that next generation are all challenges we have to face as an industry and make sure that the industry and the potato industry continues to move forward and doesn't retract or become stagnant. Supply chain challenges. These far outstretch the infamous COVID years that, um, and the disruption that has gone uh, far beyond that. During COVID, you think about some of the trends where we were talking about shortening supply chains, making them more local, security of supply. Some of those conversations are, are a distant memory and gone completely gone away. 
war in Ukraine and recent conflict in Gaza, some ocean, ocean freight issues, remember the Suez Canal? All of these have an impact on the humble potato trade in the US. Shipping finished goods and inputs on, uh, impacts on input prices and, and cost of production. And of course, eventually, impact up to our customers. Then inflation, or possibly even deflation levels. Input costs over the last two years, particularly on potatoes, have really driven by energy prices and the impact on that through to food inflation. Are we in recession or are we not? And what will that do to consumer habit, habits? And I'll touch on that a little bit more uh, a little later on. Where will people spend their money? High-end treats once in a while or discount purchases as compute consumers tighten their belts? And then finally, environmental impacts. The frequency and severity of, the, of these current events on our supply chain, we have been seeing again very globally, but we have to address and ensure we have supply to our customers. Otherwise, they will find alternatives. What choices can we make to control some of these deemed uncontrollable factors? Where we grow, varieties, agronomic practices. But again, these weather events will occur and the sea of potatoes, either in a raw or finished state, will continue to flow. And we've seen again this year, it's just sometimes the direction uh, of that current may be different, but the challenges will continue. So with all that said, um, where are we heading? Overall, it's a positive picture, with growth continuing to range at around about 2 to 4%. Pre-COVID, we were building good momentum with growth of 4%. Then in 2020, when COVID struck, we saw that sudden impact and slow down. But it was temporary, and it really showed how resilient potato uh, can be and has been. However, no, without doubt, it has left a legacy behind that the industry has have had to evolve and adapt to. Eating at home and takeout continues to play a much larger role than on-premise dining. The delivery apps continue to dominate, and we still project that um, the major players will expand outlets uh, numbers over the next three years. We expect the growth co to continue, but we must be conscious of the challenges consumers will face over the next 18 months and be ready to meet their needs to ensure we are competitive within this space. With good, strong demand in the next three years, we then turn our attention to supply and capacity. Why the range is so important on the demand side is that capacity definitely is balanced and even could outstrip demand depending on where we fall within that range. The numbers now on screen show published known new builds globally and are meant as directional. It will not include processes de-bottlenecking and efficiency gains, and obviously not, not known builds. I say this because we've been seeing increased activity from Asian markets, from locally privately owned processes that weren't simply on the radar. Not huge plants, but still establishing a foothold in the markets, and that will impact some of our export volume. This coupled with rapid expansion of um, in Europe and the known builds across North America, including the McCain Alberta um, plant that we are investing $600 million in, we are in a good place to meet demand. We need to remain competitive to ensure we are ready to maintain or grow share here in North America. So the final word, as I look at the season this year, um, and I, I mean this positively, a perceived shortfall or surplus is usually that. We must not waste or get complacent with volume. The bubble usually does burst at some point. So for me, it's always about controlling the controllable. And that's through three things. Protect. We must protect the industry we love. Ensuring we are looking at, out for future, future threats and I'm going to give a shameless plug for APRI. Uh, 
uh, and the support that that gives across across the industry by nearly all the major processors, Simplot, Cavendish and McCain, and plus now members of the fresh industry with Little Potato Company. And that collaboration with the growers and the major players within the industry. This proactive research um, that the organization is doing is world leading and it protects our industry from some of the current threats and future threat threats that uh, we, we can control. Other processing associations from across Europe and the other areas of the globe are looking at this as best practice and it must be continued and invested in by the industry. Promote. We must tell our story as one. If we don't tell our story, somebody else will. And the problem with that, it may not be the narrative that we would want to share, or it may be an incorrect narrative. You probably know McCain has been very supportive of Regen Ag movement and how we continue the great work of our growers that they've been doing. And it, it, it really is a benefit. This has helped us unlock new opportunities, sales opportunities, and also allowed a platform for our growers to speak about the great work that has been carried out on their farms for generations. Finally, partnership. I really love this in industry and the fact that we can all come together under one roof to share, learn and listen to different perspectives really gives me energy to improve the potato industry here in North America for generations to come. We have to do this in partnership with growers, with researchers, with the processors, so we can really leverage the industry. And that's what I'm really looking forward to over the next few days. So if you're available, I am uh, around on the McCain stand uh, in the main hall, or please do reach out to me or one of the McCain team in the near future. Thank you.